Hello, my name is Rhoda Meinsman and I'm a PhD student at the University of Washington here in Seattle. Uh, today I'll be presenting my ongoing work developing a curriculum to get youth to think deeper and more critically about the technology in their lives. Work that's grounded in a lot of the connected learning principles you've been hearing about and will hear about throughout the summit. This is a topic I'm incredibly passionate about and I think has great potential to really transform the lives, well-being, and the society in which youth live in and grew up in. So let's uh, dig into it. To start, it seems almost cliche to point out the varying headlines as an indicator to our society's awakening to the fact that youth and technology have a unique relationship. The amount of moral dilemmas and ethical questions that arise when youth interact with emerging technologies alongside the impacts these technologies may or may not have on their well-being has been a trending topic in recent headlines and policy, and rightfully so. Educators and researchers are, of course, along for the ride and are talking and thinking in almost every field to crack the code that is youth's relationship with technology. For example, in the computer science education spaces, researchers and practitioners have explored ways to teach computer science while prioritizing the questioning of the moral and ethical implications of technology, also known as critical computing education, and are varied in their approach and underlying value systems. Centering a critical inquiry approach to thinking about technology allows youth to look at tech in their lives, not as given facts, but rather as fluid and contextual artifacts, thereby encouraging the questioning of the role of technology, its forms and benefits, and their own place alongside it as consumers, designers, and citizens of the digital world. Techniques in this field vary from scaffolding deep inquiry about technology, designing new solutions as a way to critically look at the world, and reimagination aimed pedagogies which encourage young people uh, to rethink the present and the past to critically reimagine computing and technology and create more equitable and just futures. A different approach to engage youth with technology presented by Vakil and uh, McKinney de Royston chooses to position youth as philosophers of technology. This approach is an innovative way to both teach about and with technology, practically moving away from previous approaches which often endorse technological solutionism and existing power structures, and instead looking to develop technological wisdom with and for young people. Now, when I found this approach and saw that somewhere out there, people were working with youth while highlighting the contemplation of the ethical and moral dimensions of technology, as well as analyzing how technologies are entrenched in bias and systems of power with youth, I was incredibly intrigued. Uh, this approach would allow us to dig into the ethical and moral roles behind technology that we see in the headlines every day, together with the generation who lives in the technological future, foregrounding them, rightfully so in my eyes, as the moral leaders of tomorrow. And that's such an amazing thought, to have a, gen a generation of leaders and thinkers uh, who could think about not just the next innovative AI application or the harm social media might cause them, but about the open questions that we have with technology. Like, what is it, what it should be, and what it could be? Perhaps even ponder what the fast-paced innovation culture we live in means in terms of impact on our moral society. That is a really inspiring thought. But let me take you a step further. Having youth look at emerging technologies with a critical gaze is not simply inspiring, but perhaps a way to enhance a sense of agency and subjective well-being in the ever-changing techscape they live in. So if we take a peek into fields that talk about youth digital well-being, again, a topic that doesn't seem to need an introduction nowadays in so many academic and colloquial circles, we see that researchers have made tremendous strides in learning to design and talk about technologies in a way that not only avoids harm, but promotes well-being. A majority of these efforts reflected in projects like the Connected Well-Being Project that you'll hear about throughout the summit, highlight the importance on the strengthening of agency and the fostering of self-efficacy as we engage youth in technological related discussions. Other scholars have called for industry to design in a way that promotes well-being rather than ignores it, and perhaps consider the nuanced and complex dynamic construct that is digital well-being. 
Uh, we believe that there is a fascinating and promising connection between deep critical conversations about technology and well-being that has yet to be explored. My line of research seeks to make that link between developing youth technological wisdom, as I mentioned before, grounded in their own interests and relationships in order to increase their sense of autonomy and agency when interacting with technologies. And with those, foster a sense of visual well-being. Now, why, why the connection? Um, in short, I'd hope that given the opportunity to think deeply about technologies they encounter in their everyday lives, youth will be able to uncover many of the black boxes technologies like AI or machine learning and social media sites often present themselves to be and encourage youth to rethink their relationship to these innovations and maybe even the place of these technologies in the world in general. This may in turn increase youth cells increase youth's sense of autonomy and agency when interacting with the digital forces they face and we hope can contribute to their overall well-being. Uh, now to anyone listening who is an educator, a parent, guardian, or has been through any mainstream education system, there's probably an obvious gap. Uh, this type of deep philosophical thinking for youth is rarely taught in most mainstream education venues. Um, is it because we believe youth aren't capable of this type of thinking? Not really. Research says no, right? Um, studies have shown over and over again that youth are not only capable of deep thinking about technologies, but are often craving it and are glad to bring their life, their life experiences into these sticky and complex moral spaces that these discussions uh, get into. One practice that provides the scaffolding and has the know-how to bring youth and engage them with a complex moral space is philosophy for children or P4C. P4C emerged as a practice-based approach from the philosophy discipline to engage children in representing, discussing, and working through fundamentally philosophical questions. At its core, philosophy with kids requires developing both critical thinking and good discourse skills, being able to think beyond the facts reflecting on one's own positionality and listening to a peer speak and respect uh, and respond thoughtfully. These are all skills that are crucial to doing philosophy with kids and fostering that technological wisdom that we mentioned earlier. And so with all that in mind, today I'll be presenting my ongoing work developing a curriculum to get youth to think deeper and more critically about the technologies in their lives. Work that's grounded in a lot of the connected learning principles you've been hearing about throughout uh, the Connected Learning Summit. There's a lot of questions to be asked, right? How do we develop technological wisdom or ethical sense-making or critical outlooks on technologies with youth? Are there differences between the subjects uh, which we observe and the wisdom we develop around them? Does this type of deep thinking influence in any way use the sense of agency? Uh, I don't promise to give definitive answers to these questions today, but I am proud to share with you some of our preliminary work in this space. This past summer, we developed a six week course for teens during which we introduced techniques from P4C and scaffolded design activities to elicit our students' moral imaginaries and contribute to their emerging philosophical wisdom. The course was designed with the connected learning principles in mind, since we emphasize its co-construction co with the students based on their interests, while centering on critical and ethical thinking uh, in the context of their home and communities, highlighting the relationality and opportunities this type of ethical thinking provides. One of the main scaffolding tools we used was a tool from Philosophy for Kids, called the Moral Prisms Tool. In this tool or exercise, uh, youth get to learn about the different ethical and moral stances philosophy has to offer and practice their sense-making through asking questions that were designed with each moral prism in mind to see how they might make sense of the issue in several different ways. Now, as you can see, we might approach a dilemma through several different prisms at once by asking different questions about it, which we thought might then prompt our students to develop a more nuanced and complex understanding and thinking about the technologies they encounter in their everyday life. Our course, titled The Why Behind Everyday Technologies, had a group of 12 teens coming from underrepresented communities in the Seattle area four times a week uh, in the UW campus. We ran the course for six weeks as follows. So during the first week, 
the teens learned how to ask philosophical questions that go beyond surface level inquiry, as well as began to develop a community with us and each other that would lend itself to safe and deep discussions of the sort we were hoping to inspire. At the end of the week, the teens were introduced to the moral prisms tool and reminded that often the contemplation of ethical dimensions of technologies uh, don't lead to a definitive answer at the end of that conversation. And it's okay to be in that indefinite and maybe confusing space. Then students chose contemporary technological advancements that interested them um, and are present in their communities. This summer, our students chose data privacy, social media, and AI, and explored each of them, uh, each of these topics through the different lenses of the moral prism. For the final project, groups of students chose one technological advancement, ad advancement that most impacts them in their communities and told stories about those issues while considering the moral dimensions of it. Throughout the course, the students engaged in community building activities and reflective practices through which we wanted to get a glimpse into the impact, if any, of the development of this technological wisdom. Uh, our preliminary results and impressions show clearly that a type of ethical sense-making was developed throughout our time together. We're currently in the process of analyzing these results, which inspired us to keep improving and pursuing some of the questions I mentioned before. Anecdotally, you can see that our students felt that our scaffolding helped them dive deeper into the moral issues, uh, the topics that they chose to explore and think about differently about the relationship with technology and each other, and doing so within a community of their peers made it that much more meaningful. The work we presented here today contributes a suggested pedagogy that aims to develop youth technological wisdom using an approach inspired by the theories and methods of connected learning and philosophy for kids, centering youth's agency, relationship, and interest in the process of teaching ethical reasoning. We hope that by working through this course and others like it, we will have a positive influence on youth's well-being and better equip them to move through the ongoing technological renaissance we live in. We've had a wonderful time developing this curriculum and are excited to see how our results and future projects unfold. In the meantime, I'd love to hear any questions you may have after watching this presentation and wanting to leave you with a question of your own as we embark on a hopefully more morally grounded technological future with our youth. Thank you.